Welcome to my channel. Last month I got a request to do a flip through of all my finished works in the books by Dennis Klett. I own all her three existing coloring books. I always loved art of Dennis Klett because she always used so bright, intense colors, exactly what I love in coloring books. And all her pictures, they are very positive. When you look at her art, you always want to smile. But her books, they are not the easiest book to color for me. Even if books are printed in quite good quality, I found a couple of difficulties with them. The first thing is that many of them, and especially fairies in Dreamland, they have main image and then a lot of empty space around, like this one. And for a long time I found such pictures very challenging, especially because paper here, as I discovered after a couple of colored pictures, this paper doesn't like watercolors and even neocolor crayons. It absorbs pigment and water very quickly, so it's not easy to spread pigment over the paper. If you look on the pre wetten surface, then all colors, they look dull, not bright, and again, they can create not very attractive stains. So even if paper is thick, Sur surface of the paper isn't the best, at least for my watercolors. And until recently it was a big problem for me. But now, when I started to use more of acrylic paints and gouache paints, which behave much better here, so less transparent and more opaque paint, it really helped me to start coloring here. But still, somehow, I always have difficulties when I need to film coloring in these books. I always have some technical problems, changed colors or something like lost focus. I don't know how to explain it. Or sometimes I simply lose patience when I need to do the last elements on the page. And on many pictures, this impatience, it created not very good <laughs> last touches to the page. For example, a couple of days ago I did my last page here with fairy on the blue background. Everything went quite well, even if I did have problems during filming, but on the last step I decided to sprinkle a little bit of gold over the blue and it created ugly stains. I tried to mask them, but I wasn't very successful. Well, now let's have a look at my pictures. Fairies in Dreamland was my uh, least colored book among the three uh, of Dennis Glad books for a long time. And only when I started to use gouache, like for this background I did, it really <laughs> started to slowly fill in. At least I colored um, three pictures in the last four months and for me it's quite big comparing to all the books which I own in my collection. So it's picture which I did in June and here you can see example of this gouache background. I hope that you can see all color gradients starting from peach here and then very pastel pink and going to all the violet magenta colors. I discovered that almost all pencils behave here quite well, but my favorites are Su Color and Arteza pencils. They are very bright, they have very intense colors, just like what we need for fairies and for mermaids. And also when you need to color big pictures, and this book it has quite big size, so it's easy for me to color with budget pencils. Sometimes I don't want to use my more precious prisma colors or polychromoses. So now I'm 
happy that I discovered this way of doing backgrounds. And even if I still have some difficulties, I hope that I will be coloring more. It's one of my old works and I really like it because pink background is a little bit unusual for me. Pink isn't one of my frequently used colors, but here I think that it created a really nice atmosphere. I do love Dennis Cladbirds. Maybe they are not very big to color, but they have so such fun faces. They almost <laughs> always are uh, sleepy, they are fun, they have quite nice feathers, so they are very positive. And I hope that my tiny fairy, that she isn't lost. Maybe one of the reasons why I had, I have colored more in um, mermaids and in gnomes in neighborhood, because they have bigger main characters and all fairies, they are so tiny. This is my recently finished work and I was quite happy how everything went. I did this acrylic background because I wanted the exact this shade of blue. It wasn't bad. I used Arteza for the flowers, for the branches, for the leaves. I added a little bit of additional gouache leaves and flowers. I will post video how I did this page together with the review video. But then when I thought that the composition of this page is a little bit unbalanced because we have more busy right side and quite empty left upper corner, I wanted to add something to the background. I wanted to sprinkle a little bit of uh, bronze or golden orange color here and it didn't work well. I wasn't able to mask them completely so I can't say that I am 100% happy with this page. But you know we have so many similar pictures here that I am never really disappointed if everything goes not so well, not as expected. I can simply go for the next page. I can say that they are so unique that I really am afraid to mess up with some of the images. Some of the pictures I love a little bit more, some a little bit less, but indeed they are quite similar to one another, so I simply can <laughs> do another page and next time I hope that my background will look more accurate. This page I did a couple of months ago. Here again I used one watercolor and one gouache paint for the background. And they were not transparent by, but semi-opaque and that's why background it looks not bad. I think that for the main image I used Star Joy pencils probably because I really wanted nice shades of yellow and orange and star joy. I believe that, yeah, I use star joy. They also behaved well here. I tried to create some light halo around the fairy to attract more attention. So this page, it's not bad. Even if I did have a lot of problems during filming, I don't know why all colors of the background, they look unnaturally bright on the video like I'm using neon colors. Probably something with the settings of my camera. That was my first project, which I did immediately after I received this book. I think that when I colored everything with Prisma colors, I used a little bit of soft pastel for the background because I didn't know which medium to use, so it's not bad. Might be a little bit too overwhelming. I used really many colors. I would prefer now to limit my colors a little bit. But still, it's cheerful. I did some sparkly dots here with um, bronze and golden acrylic colors. So it was a good start, but I immediately realized that it won't be the easiest book to color. In this book I have also some projects which I started but didn't finish. This one I did with 
Aqua Blend Color Blend pencils which when I got those sets and I do love these greens maybe now it's a very old page more than three years ago maybe now I would outline this plumeria flowers with white to make them look a little bit more realistic and also I would prefer to outline hibiscus flowers but this is one of the nicest pictures in this book. And let's move to the second one. I got it together with fairies and it was easier for me to color a mermaid, even if I did struggle with paper. Here it, it was a huge struggle. I started with the watercolor for the background. I wasn't happy. I added neo colors. I wasn't happy. And in the end I used <laughs> um, acrylic paint and on top of it pencils, on top of it white gouache paint and finally I was finally happy with the eyes. So it wasn't <laughs> very quick work but at least I got exactly what I wanted in the very end. I think that picture itself is very cute. I love this walruses and mermaid. She's a very nice. It's unusual to have a mermaid in the um, winter uh, scene so I think that nice idea by Dennis Clad. And when I looked at this page, I knew that it will be one of the first which I wanted to do in this book. Let's move forward. And here I have my lovely pirate mermaid. It's an old work, but I still love everything about this page. Here, surprisingly, watercolors were helpful. I used it for the water and for the sand. And the rest I did using pencils, probably. I think that coloring video... Oh yeah, coloring video for almost all pictures from Dennis Clad books, they are available on my channel. And in the end I will leave you a link to the playlist, so if you want to color something together with me, I will be happy. And another one where I used together watercolors and pencils is this winter picture. It was some kind of art challenge and we had to turn summer page or non-Christmas page into Christmas scene. And I selected these mermaids maybe because of this uh, Christmas bulbs on the upper part of the page and maybe because of the champagne which they are drinking, so I thought that it can be nice. It's a little bit sparkly because on the tails I added glitter gel pens, but most of all I am proud how I added these garlands. I used acrylic paint, I used gouache to add the first green leaves and then bright red berries and small white dots. And I think that it really helped to create festive Christmas mood. So I do love this page. And I do love the hair of this mermaid matching colors of her tail. Again, the video is available on my channel. So maybe closer to Christmas time you would like to color with me. I also love that in this book we have pictures with birds with very cute birds. They are bigger comparing to the first book, so I love them even more. And I do love these wooden hats. Very interesting to color, very positive. So I did this one. And probably next time I will select page with similar wooden hats because I want to color them once more. This is the page where I am 100% happy, which is not very often for me, for the pictures in Dennis Kled's book. But here I really love how everything combined. Deep indigo and violet colors of the background with this um, blue-green leaves, more viridian color of the leaves, together with this pastel yellow and pastel lilac flowers. So I really love this one. It 
probably it's one of my favorite finished pictures in Kled's books. This one I did a year ago for the last mermaid and again I struggled a lot with the backgrounds. Here I used neon colors for the water, I don't remember, probably pencils for the sky, but you can see that it looks not very bright, slightly faded and it has some stains if you look closer. So not exactly the look which I wanted, so I had to cover on top of neon colors with pencils, adding some color accents. But still, in the end, I do love this page, probably because I love the initial image. She is resting, she has a lot of friends around, very positive fishes above the surface of the water. So in the end, I'm quite happy, but technically it wasn't the easiest coloring. It's one of my old works and it's memorable for me because here I wanted to do the waterfall using colored pencils. Not the easiest way of doing background. I didn't know how to do it. In the end I even added this rainbow. Maybe it looks a little bit childish, but I think that I learned something from this attempts to do the falling water and then rainbow. Maybe it would be easier to do with watercolors, but I remember that it was interesting to think how to do it, which colors to use. And I do love the whole page, a very cute turtle, very cute me matching color of the hair for the mermaid, so I have nice memories about this one. Well, it was my first page which I did when I got this book and that's where I discovered that watercolors probably isn't the best medium here for the background. I was quite unhappy how they behaved on the sky. I used a little bit of magenta, orange, yellow and I wasn't able to blend them. They abs were absorbed into the surface of the paper very quickly. They even bleed through a little bit, it's not a problem, but spreading on the paper it was a problem. Apart from these stains on the sky, everything else I do love, starting from the umbrella. And I think that it was my first time to do unusual skin tone. I was proud of myself how I did green skin, blue skin and matching tails. The water beneath I did with watercolors, surprisingly blue colors, they are not bad here. And all other colors, they were not so good, so I had to um, cover some of the stains with pencils. Now let's move forward. And what we have is this reading mermaid. I always loved her because she looks so cozy, so comfortable, so happy, so absorbed into reading. I do love to read also, so I have, I feel some connection to this beautiful mermaid. And flowers on her head, they are very beautiful. Oh, it was my first and last attempt to use oil pastel with a solvent for the background and you can see that it was a total disaster. This one I did with a mix of um, Derwenting tents which I used for the uh, ground, for the seaweeds, for the plants and the rest, the mermaid, the octopus I did with Prisma colors. And probably that's all for this book and we can move to the gnomes in neighborhood. I have heard a lot of um, different opinions about this book. I also had controversial feelings before I purchased it. I was looking at the gnomes, especially the females 
female gnomes and I was thinking they are ugly but I love them. It's strange but it's still they look strange but I do love pictures here. So in gnomes in neighborhood I even had colored this first page mostly because I wanted to experiment with uh, Derwent graffiti and pencils, they didn't behave well, so I have this a very strange wall, but everything else is not bad. Usually I don't have much luck with my first title pages in the book, so for, with my luck this one is not that bad, at least it's not completely messed up. Here I did this blue background with neo color crayons. Not so bad because I probably used two crayons in very close colors, blue and dark blue, and I didn't have to mix them to create some gradients, and in such way it's possible to use neo colors here. At least they provided this very nice shade for the sky. Apart from flowers, which I already have on this page, I added also some small, tiny white flowers for myself. I think that it really added some spring look to this page, so that's why I called it spring in the uh, neighborhood of gnomes. And again, it's available on my channel. At this moment, I already started to use Arteza mostly. After I first tested Arteza on this page, I was very happy to discover that I do love how they behave, so they became my main medium for this page. But the next one is definitely my favorite page in the whole book. I did it last spring, when the whole world went to the lockdown because of the COVID. So here we have a representation of many countries staying at self-isolation. And I tried to create some French gnome here, so I added wine, I added the French rooster, I added baguette. Next I have the German, which has his beer. Next one I have Italian, and I added this soccer ball. Not many things I was able to add here because of the small size and unfortunately the only one area which I have left to color was this small area where I added this flag and to the bird I added the crown. So here we have a representation of the Great Britain. It was really fun to do and it really helped me to uh, somehow to go over the first shock of this total lockdown which we had the last spring, so this coloring really was very fun and was very helpful. This one I did using a lot of mediums. A watercolor for the lines here for this background, then neo colors for the yellow background, probably some ink tanks for the leaves, and then Arteza for the birds and for the gnome. On this page I tested Derwent color softs. They were not bad, not the best, but not bad. They were able to blend on this paper, to cover, but with blender. The biggest problem which I got here is that, as usual, I used too many colors and because of the very colorful background, especially these shops, my lady gnome, she is slightly lost. I wasn't able to attract attention to the female gnome, so I do love the background, but not the main character here. But to do this unusual color of the leaves and this coffee pot <laughs> cafe, it really was quite nice. I have much more luck with winter pictures in this book, mostly I love them. Here I 
used newest colors from White Knights manufacturer and these pastel colors of watercolors, they have a white pigment, so they are semi-opaque and they behave really nice on this paper, so they were helpful for the snow, for the sky, and I do love this page. I think that I did it last December and I still think that it's nice. Another winter page, at least here I managed to do quite good background using a regular watercolor first and then some sparkly watercolors from Colero sets, a little bit of pearlescent lilac, pearlescent silver, pearlescent blue, so background looks nice. Maybe I had to work more on the snow, but I used two shades of gouache paint, pastel blue and pastel white, so it looks a little bit rough and I noticed that I forgot to color part of the tree. It's a little bit stupid. When I will finish to fill this one, I will finish to color this page. Oh, this one I did when I got set of Arteza pencils and I used pencils for almost everything, for the sky, for the trees, for the ice and snow, the only thing I added is a white gouache to mask black lines. And that's where I discovered that I do love Arteza on this paper. The next one I did with Prisma colors and with Neo color crayons. Again, not very good coverage of the on the sky, but I managed to mask it a little bit with the falling snow. Most of all, I love this chimney. It looks like it made from cookies and probably that's why I selected this page. And I think that it's the end. Yeah, I don't have anything else. Well, even if they are not the easiest pictures for me, I definitely want to do more in each of my three books, so I hope that you will color together with me. Link to the playlist with all my works in these books will be in the end of this video and down in the info box. Thanks for watching and until the next videos.